Hey guys, what's going on? K-pop here, and this is my second March Madness entry. Now with the first entry, I noticed that there were a lot of people in the comment section that said, you know, that K-pop, she's using her uh, femininity, <laughs> tits, um, to, to uh, win. Now, I've never actually even shown cleavage in any of my videos ever, but you know what? You guys are absolutely right. What a great idea. So, I have something a little bit extra special here for you right now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a man ass. Thank you very much. So, in an effort to number one, show that I am a fair competitor, and number two, show that no boobies were used in the making of this video. I actually had plastic surgery to change what was my chest into a man ass so that there can be no issues of crazy, crazy, sweet, sweet Paula Abdul and American Idol contestant loving in March Madness. And because that was a concern, apparently, among viewers. So I want to make sure you got, you know, I listened to you guys. I read all those comments. I want to make sure the shit's fair. So, also... I want to tell a really, really disgusting story as as well to show that no one will ever, ever be attracted to me ever again. <sighs> but it also has to, you know, it also has to do with Call of Duty as well. So don't worry about that. I will make the point. Trust me. So let's get on with the story. And it is a bit graphic. So, um, you know, if you're sensitive, stop listening. <laughs> oh, shit. What the hell? What the hell? Dude, first my radar, now my commentary. Please, just leave. Ugh, anyways, story time. Alright, so basically, I went to a bonfire over the weekend, and with most bonfires, you know, there's a fire, there's people, and there's beer. So I had like five or six beers, which was, you know, more than enough to get me happy. And so, obviously I went home, I slept for a few hours, I had to get up early. So I got up early, and I was like, oh god. But... I went to the pantry, you know, make some food that might help. And I see pancake mix. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll take some. Oh, not any pancake mix. It was blueberry pancake mix. Frickin' yeah. So I go to make the blueberry pancake mix. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of want waffles. So I take out the waffle maker and I make some blueberry waffles. Now, you know, it's not the same. They have the texture of pancakes, but they look like waffles. So whatever. So I'm pouring the Aunt Jemima. Um, Aunt Slutty Buddy, whatever her name is, I'm pouring, you know, her on my waffles. And of course it spills out like crazy. And I'm like, oh God, whatever. You know, sugar. Loves it. So I eat the pancake, or the waffles, excuse me, the waffle pancakes, if you will. And I also drink like two glasses of milk, which is kind of a lot and uh, doesn't really sit well with beer that's also still currently in your stomach digesting. So, yeah, within like 15 minutes of eating the waffle pancakes and the syrup and the m two glasses of milk, I wasn't feeling so hot. So I go to the bathroom and I puke. And all I have to say about that is this was the best tasting puke I have ever puked up in my life. I puked it up and it tasted like blueberry waffle or not blueberry waffles, excuse me, blueberry muffins. Oh my god. So, you know, as bad as puking is and as much as I hate it, it wasn't that bad because it tasted like blueberry muffins coming out. So it went from blueberry pancakes to blueberry waffles to blueberry puke to blueberry muffins. So, what I was kind of considering is, if Modern Warfare 2 is pancakes, and we have Modern Warfare 2 pancake mix, you know, with our one-man army beer, and then we go and make Black Ops waffles with second chance milk, what does that make Modern Warfare 3? Clearly, it makes it blueberry puke and blueberry muffins. So. I'm not sure how excited we should be about Modern Warfare 3. I want to be really, really excited. But I was also really, really excited about Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops. And they both had some really annoying things. But let's think about this. If we don't 
take any swigs of that one-man army beer or any swigs of that second chance milk, there should be no problem. Do you get my drift? Because I'm not sure I even get my drift. And to wrap things up, guys, I just want to say asking men to take a picture of their ass in a bra is a lot easier than you think it would be. And that's surprising to me. Anyways, with that said, I want to leave you with a really important question. Lard ass trashy or Kesha? Let me know. What's up guys, it's Dirk, or what's up March Madness viewers, I should say. My name is Dirk, and we're doing another commentary here today. We're playing some demolition on the map of Berlin Wall, and I'm sniping. Uh, Berlin Wall was actually one of the maps that came out in the First Strike map pack, for those of you who didn't know. Um, although it may seem like old news, being that the First Strike map pack came out a few months ago, I wanted to bring it up for a couple reasons. One, in only a few weeks' time, I think it's May 5th, so that's about two weeks from now, or three weeks actually, uh, we will be able to download the the uh, the next map pack for Black Ops called Escalation, so that's pretty exciting. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, that information just actually started to come out a few days ago, like three or four days ago. So I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that, and I also wanted to know what did you guys think of the First Strike map pack? Looking back on it, if you did buy it, looking back on it after playing it for the past uh, two months or so, what do you think of it? Do you think it was worth your money? Because in my opinion, I'm not really sure. Um, in my eyes, it was kind of a fluke, but I still think it was worth my money. The reason I think it's a fluke or a failure, for those of you who don't know what that means, um, is because Kowloon and Discovery are two of the worst maps that I've ever seen. Uh, this is in my opinion. I think those maps are just terrible, but before I get into that, look at this. I missed them. Pick up one more, pop back out, and get the collateral like a pro. Ooh, baby, a collateral. Uh... I don't know why I just did that, but yeah, Kowloon and Discovery, not the greatest maps in my opinion. Uh, Stadium was pretty good, almost good enough to justify buying the whole map pack uh, on its own. And Berlin Wall, it's so-so. Uh, it can be good for some game modes, bad for others. Some Sometimes you'll play it and have a blast, sometimes you'll just be like, why am I playing this map? But there is one thing that's really consistent about Berlin Wall, and that's that the map is really good to snipe on. Uh, the way it's designed, you've got lots of long lines of sight and lots of open areas, so sniping is a very effective playstyle pretty much wherever you are, and you're always able to get to a spot where you can use the sniper and get a lot of kills. And you see I just no-scope that guy and then just completely toy with him as he jumps through the window. Um, but yeah, so leave a comment telling me whether you thought the buying the first strike map pack was worth it in your opinion. And look at this. So I realized I was sort of flawless. I run back here because I didn't want to engage him head on because I wasn't sure I was going to win. And I ended up shooting him in the ankles as he ran in kind of dumb, dumbly. So I uh, ended up getting the final kill cam. So that was pretty nice. So let's move on to round two. So as you see there on the scoreboard, I'm 11 and 0, which means one, I'm flawless, so I want to keep the flawless. And two, it means uh, because I got 11 kills and no deaths, it means I went through all my kill streaks. So I got the napalm, the blackbird, and the dogs. You see there, I call on the dogs. And now a lot of people tend to run something like chopper gunner or gunship over the dogs in this game, and I think they're definitely an underestimated kill streak. The reason I'm using them on this map specifically is because there's a lot of buildings. So as you know, you go inside a building when someone has a chopper gunner, you're safe from the chopper gunner for the most part and on this map that's the first thing people do you put a chopper gunner in the sky there's so many buildings on this map that it is very easy for an entire team to hide and you'll have no way to kill them so the dogs in my opinion are better for a map uh, like Berlin Wall because they can get up inside those buildings and take out um, you know all the enemies that are trying to hide from your uh, chopper gunner or any sort of air support where they would hide if you did have the chopper gunner so Definitely use the dogs on this map. Um, as you see, the these particular pack of dogs in this gameplay were really successful. I think they got me somewhere along the lines of like 10 or 12, maybe even 15 kills. Uh, something ridiculous like that. So let's pause this real quick and we'll show you guys this spawn. So when you're playing demolition on this map, the attacking team's spawn is behind this flipped over car inside that building and next door to it in the parking lot. So what you're going to want to do is try and cut that spawn off from the A-bomb, which is behind me as you see here. And in order to do that, the best spot to be with a sniper rifle is inside this bar or tavern right here. As you see, I'm able to get lots of kills. Sometimes you'll even even get lucky and the, uh, the enemy team will all line up and you'll be able to get a collateral. So definitely utilize this spot when you're playing demolition on this map. 
So in the next few minutes, I'm utilizing this spot really, really well. You see I pick off that guy, and then I'm going back and forth between inside this tavern and peering through the doorway like that and getting that guy. And I'm going back and forth between doing that and peering around this corner here up the street. Now, this is really good. One, as you see, I'm getting lots of kills, so it's obviously working. But it's also good because it keeps your enemies on their toes, keeps them on their feet, uh, keeps them a little confused at all times as to where you exactly are and uh, you know as to where your location is so what that does is a lot of times you'll find yourself shooting someone who's trying to kill you but they're going to one doorway when you're shooting them from the doorway that's they're that you know that they're not concurrently looking at so that's a really good strategy to use uh, when it comes to trying to survive and unfortunately the flawless did end there but this guy this uh, fanboy tried to invite me to an Xbox Live party because he saw that I was flawless and that I'm such a beast with the uh, with the sniper so didn't accept that though because I wanted to keep the gameplay going it's kind of uh, kind of a uh, adrenaline killer when you try and you know get on the Xbox menus and accept anything so didn't accept it but uh, pick off this guy now I wanted to talk to you guys about the variable zoom site and why it is that I use it on pretty much all the attachments so or all the sniper rifles for that matter so the attachments that you can get on most sniper rifles are the variable zoom the default scope which is the one that's always there uh, the infrared and the ACOG the ACOG and the infrared are very engagement specific I'll say uh, the infrared you're gonna wanna be not very mobile you're gonna wanna be a stationary uh, stationary shooter shooting someone who's not you know moving that fast because it can be kinda confusing to to use accurately at most times now the ACOG is really limited to close range now the variable zoom is the most versatile of any of the attachments and that's why I use it and that's why I like it so much is that I'm able to use it at any range that I want to so right here where I'm kinda of in the spawn it's very fast paced and a lot of close range engagements I'm able to use the outermost zoom level and engage my targets and lock on to uh, lock on to them very quickly and this is kinda of funny I pick off these two guys and this guy walks into my claymore but um, the outermost zoom level is really good for engaging targets quickly especially when you're being mobile and almost quick scoping where you're also able to have that farthermost zoom level where you can engage in a, an enemy at very very long range and that's what I really like about it anyways my name is Dirk hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to come up, come check out my channel at youtube.com slash Dirk the Devil see you guys later